Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Diane King Hall. I'm in for Oliver Rennick. Joining us now, we've got Dan Bradar, CEO of Ideal Power. It's a semiconductor power switch company. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. All right, your company stock <laughs> jumped last week, gained some more ground today. Uh, you had this news of completion of phase two of the development program with Stellantis. So, talk to us about what does this mean for the EV space and the future of EVs. Sure. You know, electric vehicles have two big challenges right now. They have uh, a cost challenge and they have an issue with range anxiety. People are concerned about how far can they actually get on the batteries in the vehicle. What our semiconductor technology does, it helps improve both of those situations. It helps reduce the cost and it helps extend the range. And that's why you're seeing interest in companies like Stellantis that are working with us to actually fund a development program that is targeted for having our technology in their EV platform production ready for next year. So Dan, how, so I get that question about range anxiety. I don't have an electric vehicle, but I've rented one before. And I remember a certain point because I rented it on an island and it's not, there was one supercharger on the island and it mm -hmm. was like to get, you know, you had to make sure you had enough power to get from one place to the other. And so I experienced that feeling of range anxiety. How does this technology, uh, you know, kind of address that? Can you speak a little bit more about the specifics? Sure. It, you know, semiconductors are used a lot in all vehicles, both conventional and electric vehicles in particular. In fact, semiconductors are the second highest cost component in an electric vehicle. Um, what the semiconductors do is they extract, they control the extraction of energy from the batteries and how quickly they are recharged. So, and the more efficiently you can take energy from the battery, convert it to the right voltage for your vehicle to use, the more range you get. And that's what our technology does. It's very efficient in terms of how it takes energy from the battery and sets it to the right voltage for the vehicle. So Stellantis is a, a big partner for you all. Where else are you all or what other companies are you all looking to partner with uh, in the, especially when you expand out in the EV space? Well, in the EV space, we actually are already working with another top 10 global automaker. We're working with some tier one suppliers to the auto industry. But our first revenue is actually coming from the industrial sector. We introduced a product that we call the SimCool Power Module. And it's really targeted for applications like solid state circuit breakers, renewable energy, power converters for a whole variety of applications. So you'll see our first revenue coming from these industrial markets while we get through that qualification process and ramp up with the, the electric and hybrid vehicle manufacturers. And then in terms of the, uh, okay, in terms of the ramp up with the hybrid and electrical vehicle manufacturers, so what's the story? You said you've, you've been in phase two with Stellantis. What's the store for phase three and what's the timeline for that? Phase three will be awarded here shortly. The objective of phase three is to have a production ready module for next year. And part of that process will mean we will take our product through a bunch of third party testing that is done to certify that it meets the automotive codes and standards. Uh, we think it's going to be a pretty straightforward process because we've done a lot of testing already, but you do have to have that third party validation. And while that is going on, the others that are in this program will be working on designing the inverter for the drivetrain, incorporating our technology so that we've got a module that's ready to go uh, when Stellantis wants to start ramping up electric vehicles with our technology. All right, and let's just talk a little bit about uh, your your dividend. Uh, how else are you are you looking for to expand your dividend at all? We we don't pay a dividend. We are we're not a profitable company yet. Uh, sorry, we have, are just that. now commercializing our technology. Okay. All right. So in, in terms of your technology, let's talk about the SimCool power module. How does this? What's the innovation here? How does this change the game? Yeah, you know, if you think about all of the renewable energy that's going in with people putting solar in their homes and their businesses, people putting in energy storage for backup power, all the EV charging that's going to be built out, um, there needs to be a big investment in our infrastructure. And part of that is protecting equipment from lightning strikes, disruptions on the electric utility grid, and that's done with circuit breakers. But unfortunately, the conventional right. circuit breakers are mechanical devices that act too slow. Our technology can operate a, a, a circuit breaker orders of magnitude faster and do it with dramatically lower losses than what can be done with conventional semiconductor devices. So you get 
fast acting, safer, and much more useful energy for the end user for their renewable energy installation or for the utilities themselves. All right, and any other expansion plans that we should know about, Dan? Yeah, you know, we, we're bringing out another product later this year that we call the SimCool IQ module, which adds controls to the SimCool module that really opens the door for applications like solar coupled with energy storage, motor drives, and UPS systems for data centers. So we're really leveraging our technology to drive early revenue in the renewables and industrial spaces while we work with the automakers to get through their qualification process so that they're driving the high volume revenue for us, you know, starting as likely as early as late 2025. All right, that was Dan Bajar, CEO of Ideal Power West. Quarterly results due later this week. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dan.